Me, 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 That's meat in Polish. Today we're going to make cutlet shabove. Shabove. The terrible translation is fried pork chop. People know it as schnitzel. There's many kinds of different shabove. And there's like po, uh, polubelsku, uh, poznansku, and even, um, okay, so that means like the Lublin region, the Poznan region, the, and there's even a Swedish style, which is like a cordon bleu type of thing. But like, you know, Lubelski is, uh, the Lublin region is just an egg wash done to the frying pan. We're doing the one that's very basic. Okay, the, the old schnitzel type. So, Join me. We're going to use some breadcrumbs. Of course, we have our pork loin. The uh, Half of it's gone because I took it to my friends the other day. We made a pork roast. That was that redder part, the one with a little more um, uh, fat in the meat. And so we took it. This is the better part to use for cutlets starting in here. So we're going to, we're going to take that uh, fat off, and then we're going to start cutting it up. And I got, I, as everything else, I get it from my local butcher. So we're going to use some breadcrumbs plain. I'm going to show you how to spice them up. Don't use pre-seasoned breadcrumbs. It's ridiculous. Don't let someone decide your flavors. Some eggs, canola oil, milk, and our lovely meat pounder there. So let's do this. Cutlet Shabove. So there we have it. I took that uh, fat and skin off. Sometimes you get a little bit of meat off of that. It happens. So what I'm actually thinking about doing with that, because I don't like anything to go to waste, is I was going to maybe salt it up and render it and try and get some more and make, make a lard with it and then put it in my um, bacon fat jar so I could use it for cooking for later. I, I try not to let things go to waste. So we have that, we have our loin, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop it up in slices, then I'm gonna spread it out and I'm gonna pound it. So stay tuned, here we go. And a little bit of note here, I gotta, I gotta retract back a little bit. When I took my loin, cause what you want is you want nice straight loin that you can cut into nice cutlets. I realized that, that this part here was attached to it and it's a little bit, and it was, just held back by some fat, so I took that out. And of course, nothing goes to waste, so I'm gonna put that in my goulash bag, I like to call it. Uh, I put a bag, and then when I make goulash or something, or make sausage or kibasi, I take that scrap, that scrap meat, and I uh, use it, so nothing's going to waste. So I just wanted to make a note of that. So you wanna take off all those sides. That fat's okay, it's gonna be good. So you wanna make sure that you're able to cut just nice chops, hence, pork chops. Hey, hey. So we cut up our pork loin and uh, I cut them one inch pieces. And how do you know that? Well, because my thumb is two inches from here down to my knuckle there. So I know about one inch on these cutlets. One inch, one inch. Okay. And as you got to the end, closer to that other part that I mentioned that was like the roast, the red meat style, is you see some of these Chops may not make the cut, okay? There might be a little bit too much. It may separate a little bit. We'll see. This one will probably make it, maybe this one, but definitely these two. Well, we'll try, but if not, they go to the goulash sausage bag. So, but look how many loins, look how many chops you get out of this. You see how it starts changing right about there, you see? It gets a little different there. Then it starts to get a little, you see where that loin separation is. We can get away with that. We can get away with that. And then it starts to get a little, we can get that. And uh, there'll be a different texture on it, but then we get that. So, like I said, we're going to see what we can do. And let's see how many chops we got out of that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 chops out of that loin. So imagine that. You can feed so many people. And pork loin is always so inexpensive. Like I said, the best the best food of Polish and actually anywhere in the world is people that, that, that have to stretch or, or you know uh, live within their means. And this is no exception. The reason they pound it out and uh, bread it and such is because it doesn't have a lot of fat. Now, of course, you see a little fat here, but that's not what we're talking about. In general, when we're talking about these nice white pieces, you know, that's lean. So what are you going to do with it? You're going to pound it out. You're going to put it in a uh, uh, an egg and, and, and um, uh, milk wash and then bread it and then fry it. Okay? So we make the best of everything. Gotta love the Polish. Now I have a little bit of a cheater trick. I know I try to do things as authentic as possible, trying to do what my grandma did, but I'm sure this is something grandma did not do. But if you can see, I put um, saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you say about it, whatever you want to call it, 
on my cutting sur my, on my uh, uh, table surface, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these cutlets spread out, and then I'm going to put a sheet of the plastic over it, so when I pound it, it stays contained, there's no splatter, there's less mess, easier cleanup, but just a better, better situation overall. So I'm lining uh, my uh, area with plastic and then putting my cutlets on. Of course, i got to move the cut. Over and, uh, but I'll show you when I'm all done and get ready to start pounding the meat. Make sure you want to leave enough space. Definitely leave enough space so it's going to expand because this cutlet here is going to be about this big. By the time we're done. So that will become that. So you want to leave enough room. So I've got plastic below, plastic on top. And we just simply pound these out. Not too hard. Use the uh, divoted, uh, the um, pegged side, whatever you want to call that. It's nice and easy. We see how the difference already went from that to that. And we want to pound and see how I do it in a circular motion and then go to the middle, push out, go to the middle and push out, go to the middle and push out. And when you tap it evenly, you'll realize that you get a nice even spread. And when it gets to about there, that's that's your cutlet. See? It went from that to that. Do you see the difference? And look at the lack of mess because I have the plastic on top, plastic on the bottom. It'll be an easy cleanup. It'll be easy maintenance. And that is a little less cleanup because you don't want meat getting in between your and your inside your mouth there. So we're going to keep continuing pounding these cutlets up. I uh, also thought of something as I'm pounding. I've, I've been in situations where, you know, I've been asked to cook or something comes up or I forgot some equipment. And, I, oh, my God, I don't have my meat mallet here, um, my meat tenderizer. But you can use a flat pan. Um, a cast iron would be nice because it's nice and heavy and you want to get nice, even central pounds. And it will pound out. It will pound out because this meat is, is very malleable. You can really, you know, shape that in any kind of form. But I remember that. I just I wanted to, you know, share that information that um, I have uh, used a flat pan because I didn't have a, a mallet. So this, there, you, you can make your way through it. Look at that. See how the difference is? Look at that. See how those? So we got a couple more to go. And the next step. The meat is pounded. Remember I told you about those ones towards the end I wasn't really sure of. You see, it just... It just started to be at towards the end, but you can still use it, see, because nothing goes to waste. And it's not going to be any kind of difference in the texture of the form. But those are those ones I said, ah, I think they're going to make it. I really didn't even bother using the ones that I said. You know, I will pound it out just for just for principle. Just to see what happens. If not, I'll throw them in the goulash bag still. But here's something really cool. I've always noticed this while pounding out uh, schnitzel or uh, shabobis, is that... The cutlets kind of look like Poland when you pound them out. But then there's always one that really always looks like. Look at that. That looks just like the country of Poland. I wonder if there's something to that. And they kind of take the shape of the map of Poland. Isn't that cool? I, just, you know, I notice these little weird things. I'm, I'm a food nerd. What can I say? But we're going to go on to the next phase. We're going to take this plastic off. We're going to start preparing our uh, egg and, and milk bath and our breadcrumbs. And we're going to get our pans ready. And we're going to start frying these. Again, Easy stuff. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need the special equipment. So kind of just to give you an idea, you know, I told you about the plastic. It makes things convenient. Watch this. I'm grabbing the plastic from the bottom, and I just, I just roll up, roll up the pork loins so I can set my trays up here to start my breading. So isn't that neat? Oh, oh we got a stray. We got a stray. Escapee. Escapee. But now you see how that's neat? You can just take that and you can pick it up and you can move it somewhere else that you need. But it's all there. Isn't that cool? So we're moving on from our ungrandma-like convenience of having the uh, plastic. And I made my egg and milk wash. Uh, I went with a couple more eggs. I put the equal parts of milk as, amount, the, as the same amount of liquid as the eggs have. And I put a little bit of salt and pepper so that flavoring can impermeate the meat. Then I have my plain breadcrumbs and I put a little salt. I always try to use sea salt. Pepper, dried thyme, dried parsley, granulated garlic, and marjoram. 
Those are the typical. Those are very typical bowl spices. Now, if you're doing something like pounding chicken, maybe for chicken parm or something like that, you can add, you know, your your Italian based spices. But sp season your own breadcrumbs. Don't let somebody season them for you. And, th and this this is the reason why, because then you could take your plain breadcrumbs and make them Polish style flavor. And and in the long run, it really does make a difference. You, you get that flavor in there. So I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to whisk together that uh, egg and milk with the salt and pepper. And we're going to start breading, and we're going to get our pan hot, and we're going to start cooking. Again, not hard, folks. Not hard. Just a little time consuming. A lot of love. People think you'll, people think you spent a lot of time and a lot of effort on it. Well, you did in some way, but just take the compliments. The egg and milk wash is all ready. The breadcrumbs with our Polish spices are in there. And we have our meat, and we just put a bunch of them into the into the egg wash let them start taking in a little bit of that egg salt and pepper so you put a lot of them in there okay and there's another trick too a friend of mine told me years ago thanks stump um you know egg with the left breading with the right so we're going to try that as much as we can i might even have to get my phone a little messy but gotta practice what i preach so you want to get those egg wash Piece of meat in that egg wash. Okay. All right, so I'll grab my little towel here. So I'm gonna switch hands with the phone. <laughs> so first, you take one of your cutlets into the right, the wet hand on the left. Okay. So then I right, switch the phone. Oh, got my thumb in the picture there. All right, and then you take the breadcrumbs, pour it on top. And pat it down a little bit. You want to push those, want to push those uh, breadcrumbs in. Do it again on top, on the other side. Tap it down. Shake off the loose and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We're gonna do that for all of our cutlets. Okay, and then we'll fry. So I believe in prepping. You know, let's do them all at once. If you have a second person, one person does the egg, one person does the breadcrumbs. But try to do your left hand with the egg and your right hand with the with the uh, breadcrumbs, and then that's what you're gonna get. We're gonna keep doing this a little bit, okay? So we've got another one here. All right, onto the, dry my hand so I can switch the phone holder. All right, and here we go again. Toss them on top. Pat it in. Flip it. Throw it on top. Pat it in. We'll spank, spank the meat. Spank your pork. There you go. It's another cutlet. All right, we're going to keep doing that for all 14 of our cutlets. And then we'll go to the frying pan. There is all of our cutlet chabove breaded and ready for the fryer. A lot of our eggs gone. A lot of our bread comes gone. Now, if you want to be resourceful, you can reuse these eggs. Well, there may be a little bit of pork in it. I doubt it. But anything that's in it will die off or cook off. Uh, when you cook it. So if you want to save it for tomorrow, make some scrambled eggs or an omelet. There you go. I also mentioned in my kopitka potato uh, dumpling recipe, one of the toppings you could put on kopitka or dumplings is take the breadcrumbs and put it in butter in a pan and make it like a, like a, like a crackling, like a crispy, so you can use those um, herbed, Polish herb, Polish spiced breadcrumbs. So if you don't want to waste things, which I don't like to, so I try to reuse things, you could try and reuse that stuff. There won't be no harm in that. So we're about ready to go to the frying pan. We got the pan on a medium high heat. Usually I have a much bigger pan, so it's gonna kind of look, gonna look kind of funny when I only have one or maybe two uh, shabobis in there, but I uh, took it to a food event and it's still at my buddy's house from using it. So Troy, give me back my big frying pan. But here's how we know that the frying pan is ready. I have it on medium high heat and we sprinkle a little water on it and when those beads dance around like that see that means it's hot enough so we're going to put some oil in and then we're going to test that heat by putting in some breadcrumbs seeing if it sizzles remember hot wok cold oil don't put the oil in and then heat it up use a hot wok for cold oil oil's coming up next hot wok cold oil then you take a little bit of your breadcrumbs and drop it in and if it starts to sizzle and cook like that, well, actually, that's a little bit low. So we're going to turn it up a little bit and try to get the right temperature. 
All right, let it heat up. Put it up a little bit hotter just for a second. Actually, it was like 10 seconds since I turned the film off. And see, I toss it in, and look, the breadcrumbs are starting to cook. That means we're ready to drop our first cutlet shabove. Look at that. Perfect. Look how that's sizzling. It's going to be about two minutes on each side. And that way it allows, if you want to cook it longer and to heat it to serve, great. But this allows you to pre-make them and you can then freeze them or hold them until you want to eat them hot. And then you can put them back on the skillet. It'll finish cooking, even though most of it is. But you're, it gives you that allowance of being able to reheat it uh, while still finished cooking so it doesn't get overdone, doesn't dry out. Okay, and you see the edges are browning. Look at that, just for, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Actually, I'm going to flip that. I know I said about two minutes on each side, but look at that. That's about a, I don't know, you probably back time it. And I have my cookie tray with my uh, paper towels to absorb the grease. I use a canola oil. It's quite light. You don't want to use an olive oil. It, it burns too quickly. It has a high flash point. Um, a canola oil is good. You can use vegetable oil. I like canola. It's a little bit lighter, a um, little less flavor of the oil than others. A canola oil. Now, some of the tricks, again, that... Oh, got to be careful of the fire alarm, even though I have the fan on. Let's go deal with that and be right back. <laughs> All right, I turned the fan on high. I opened the window so I get a little ventilation. And there we go. Well, that's a little bit done on that side, so we want to be careful for the next one. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, another one on that. I'm gonna try and get two as we go on. You know, I was saying before, a friend of mine taught me years ago that when you're making, um, you know, uh, schnitzel like this, veal, chicken, after about two or three cutlets or two or three rounds of cooking, get rid of it. Dump your oil out, start with fresh oil because it's going to get darker and darker. And you want these all to be the same kind of consistency. I did let that one go a little bit, but that's the kind of color you want right there. So I made two of those uh, shababis already. The heat was a little bit high, which made it a little bit dark. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. I, wa I dumped the oil out and then I rinsed it out with water and we're starting all over again. We're gonna do this all the way through the process. When you start seeing the uh, breading left behind turning a little black, then you wanna uh, change, change the uh, oil. All right, so we're gonna pour in some more oil. So fresh oil in, red crumbs in, they're sizzling. We're ready for some more cutlets. There you go. They're in there, a little bit lower. Give another minute on that, like I said, about a minute or two on each side. So we're going to be able to do that. This time I'm getting two shabobis in there. We're going to keep doing this until we're done. Remember, after about two or three rounds with that oil, I'll change it out. I did get a little more control of the heat. It's going to take a couple of... Uh, Shabobis on in the pan to notice uh, when, when you're at the right temperature and such. So that's what I have. First, uh, first side was two minutes, and this side is well underway on its two minutes. But look at how that beautiful golden brown color is. You see your herbs; they're present. And if you could smell this, oh my God, it smells so wonderful. Okay, you see. A couple minutes on each side. That's definitely done, and if you then and it allows you to reheat it without overcooking it. The moisture will not go away. You sealed in the juices, okay. and we're gonna keep going and adding more. See, we're gonna get a second round. There you go. Gently push it over. You can find a smaller one. Try and get two on there. I don't think there's such thing as a small one in here today. Well, all right. this will, this will, this is the winner of the small one, I guess. You got to make a little room in the pan. If you get multiple pans, you get multiple pans. If you have a big pan, like mine, which is sitting somewhere, waiting to be picked up in a seasonal home, maybe you won't see it through the winter. I hope not. I like my pans. 
If you notice, a lot of my kitchen equipment is commercial. I shop at a restaurant supply shop. I'd rather that than some uh, big box store cooking set. It just never works out. So I'd rather spend a little bit more money and just have something that's going to last forever guaranteed. And about two minutes on each side. Nice and golden. I got that temperature under control. And, uh, yeah, I am starting to sample the goodies. And you got to. Because remember, never trust a thin chef. Mmm. Oh, my gosh. It's so great. You taste the salt and the pepper, which permeated the meat in the egg wash. And then the breading, so nicely flavored with those Polish spices that I told you about. Makes for a wonderfully flavorful cutlass shop over when are we going to get smell-o-vision? When is this happening? So this is the uh, third batch on this set of oil. And you see it's well done. It's perfect. Beautiful golden brown. But that oil is just looking a little bit bleh. So we're going to get rid of it. Shh! Don't tell nobody. We know our heat level is good. Our, our fire level you know, it's, it's about a medium-high high. So we wait for that water to dissolve off. Then we'll put the oil in. Then we'll test it with some breadcrumbs. And we continue. We're almost done. Mm. You'll know when the oil is a little bit ready also, besides just putting uh, breadcrumbs in, you see it quivering a little bit. I don't know if you get that on the video, but the but you see, like, the vapor, and you see, like, the, uh, the, the movement of liquid through the... Um, you know, do the heat of the oil. So, and they always just test it like that. There it is. Just another minute. There we go. See? All right. Now let's flip that one over. Grab that little, got a little tab here on this one. It's kind of cool. There you go. There we go. A couple minutes on each side. Let's pile it up. Mm. And um, I think something happened. Someone must have. Uh, or one of those uh, color shabobis must have walked away or something. I'm not, you know, I don't know what happened, but I'll look into it. After further investigation, I have found the missing cut list. Yeah, it was me the whole time, okay? Well, look at that. It's thin. It's well cooked all the way through. This is one of the first ones. Remember, it was a little bit burnt, but there's really no difference in flavor. Maybe aesthetically someone might not like it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It is so wonderfully tasty. Perfect, moist, juicy. Mmm. Cup of Shabovi is the way to go, man. Alright. Well turn the heat off we're all done and there you have it cutlet shabove and if you're counting yes 14 arrived 12 made it through coming this winter who stole the pork that's cutlet shabove this is actually the centerpiece of one of my favorite sunday dinners sunday dinner is very important for me it was definitely reinforced when i lived over in poland uh, this with some red sauerkraut, which I have in a previous video, and kopitka, potato dumplings, which is also in a previous video. And you can top this off with maybe a horseradish uh, soured cream and herb sauce, or maybe a mushroom sauce, or nothing. Maybe some applesauce on the side, however you like it. There's nothing wrong. But this is cutlet shabovi. Hey, you want to subscribe because I'm going to keep making stuff like this. Sauces and herbs are coming up and salads, so you want to get a definitely want to subscribe so you don't miss out.
There it is, Cutlet Shabovi. And that's the one that looks like Poland right there. Cutlet Shabovi. Mm mm mm. Thanks for tuning in.